Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mary. Mm. Can you start by introducing yourself? Mm, okay, my name is um, Linus uh, Williams, but they call me uh, B Lord, the Bitcoin Lord. Oh, that's nice. Where are you from? Actually, I'm from Anambra State, Ebenebe in Anambra State. Uh, Ebenebe is a village in Anambra State. Mm. Why are you called Bitcoin Lord? Mm, uh, actually, I deal on Bitcoin. So uh, I, I'm a Bitcoin trader. I trade Bitcoins. So that's why they call me B Lord. The B, my name is Bitcoin Lord. Yeah. Mm. When did you start trading Bitcoin? Um, I started trading Bitcoin um, when I was uh, in 300 level. That should be 2017. And I brought State University. I started trading Bitcoin. That was when uh, Bitcoin wasn't that popular. So I, one of my friends said um, he has Bitcoin to sell. So. We are moving around the school looking for who to buy the Bitcoin and we didn't even see. So not until I went online to make research on how to sell Bitcoin and all that. So I found somebody that uh, buys Bitcoin. So, you know, then uh, it was scary though. So I had to just try the guy. So I tried the guy and we started my friend's Bitcoin. I didn't make any profit that time. So he paid us and uh, I was like, wow. So. Bitcoin buyers are scarce. That means if I can if I can get people that want to sell, I can be a middleman. So that was how I I joined Bitcoin as a middleman. So making little profits here and there. That was what I used to graduate because then school was very tough. So that was how I just joined cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Okay. So your company, Blood Group, when was it founded? Um, B Lord Group was founded um, two years ago. B Lord Group, before it was answering um, Linus Williams Enterprises. When I started after school, 2018, I left school to Oka. I think the day I wrote my final papers, I left school to Oka to start a new life. So that was when I um, found that line. Then it was Linus Williams Enterprises. So it wasn't B-Lot Group. So it's when I became famous, I, they gave me B-Lot. So I just found the name B-Lot. I used the name. So two years ago, that was when we officially registered my company as B-Lot Group. So under the B-Lot Group, we have real estate, we have um, phone accessories, we have clothing under the B-Lot Group. Okay. So what really brought you into the limelight? How did you get famous? <laughs> the thing is, um, uh, there's one time I I paid Insta blog. I did a video with my brothers, a, a video where um, it's got something like a skit. So I posted on Insta blog. Then I had just um, about 200 followers. So I posted the video on Insta blog and tuned it not. Then they were charging Insta blog charged me 70k. Soon they charged me 50k then. So we posted the video and I got, I was having like 5,000 followers. I was like, ah, just now. And customers were coming through the posts. So I said, I don't even need celebrities to do this. I can do this. So that was how I started. Um, I started with them um, uh, showing off um, my cars. You know, I was showing off cars. People were like, this guy, this guy, this guy, disturbing everywhere. So I was showing off my car. I had the, the lasers then. So I was snapping pictures, posting, post on Insta blog too. So, but the main thing that brought me to limelight was um, when I was arrested by EFCC. That should be 20, 20, um, 2020. What brought me to the limelight and got um, me, people to know me very well, like notable people. Because before I was arrested, I had just um, 100k followers. So I was arrested by EFC 2020. I should be around September. They seized all my cars. So people, based on the way I was showing off them, people were so, like 90% of people on Instagram were so happy, like, ah, this guy finally showed now you rest. No, many of them thought I was into internet uh, fraud. What blew up people's mind was a few months, around November, I challenged the EFCC to court. I took them by surprise, took them because people were scared of this, those EFCC. So I took them to court. That was what, like, ah, 
a young man like this. Then I was just 22. A young man like this, 22 years, taking years to court. It was on newspapers, it was on Insta blog. Then I didn't even pay, I, didn't, I didn't have to pay blocks again to start posting. So they posted the news like B Lord um, took KFC to court. So that was what made me so much famous. Like then I grew up from I was I was verified. When the FC arrested me, I came out, I was verified immediately on Instagram. They gave me blue tick on Instagram. My followers blew up from like I was like one million followers then. And fast forward to um, a year later, that was actually okay, this year. What blew me up again was they released those cars. I won them in court. So those cars were released. It has never been done before. It has never been done before. So they released my cars and people were like, so they can take years to court. So that was what, now I'm around um, two million followers now. So this, 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 that EFCC was the major thing that brought me out. So how were you able to bounce back from all of that? Because I know the whole being arrested by EFCC should have one way or the other brought like a negative impact. How were you able to bounce back from that? <sighs> it, was, it was really crazy. Well, I was detained for 10 days. So when I came out, I, my brain scattered. My, uh, everything was damaged. I, when I was inside that cell, everything was damaged. So, I came out, so I, we don't have customers again. So I came out and we found out that almost every, because my phones were seized, the company's laptop were seized, so they couldn't even make any transaction and all that. So you know, when you're off for business for 10 days, you know your customers will go somewhere else, you know? And people were scared of trading with me. So what really saved me was um, the blue tick. The blue tick, because when I came out, the blue tick entered. So a car dealer gave me uh, a car, a, a Mercedes Benz. Jelly for I, have, I still have the car. My wife is driving the car now. It's Jelly 350. He gave me the car on credit. I told him, give me this car. I'm going to pay you extra um, two million. The car. It's a car dealer. You know, Instagram people. What they believe, they believe in all this. They believe once you have car, you are. So when when that stuff, when that stuff happened, when they seized on my car. So imagine when they seized on your car, you bounced back with a bigger car. So those customers came back, I used those cars, I used that car to let them know that I'm still the builder, you know. So I got a new car, that the car blew up this, this, uh, on the internet, like builder girl that I got a new GLA 350. And that car was expensive than those cars the FCC took, so. That was when I had much customers. Then I, I, I built a, a very big mansion. So those things from there, we, we, then we had just um, two staffs. But now we have up to like 40 staff. This I'm telling you was just a year ago, around um, um, this are uh, um, December, um, January last year. So when I got those cars, I built a house. All those customers, my customers were so mad. Like I, I, I turned to real celebrities where I, I barely go out. But me, I don't um, take that celebrity serious. I like moving on my own. I don't even care. So if you see me, you want to take pictures, take pictures. That's my, that's my phone. So how have you been able to use social media to help your business, to push your business how? forward? How? Even for social media, I don't think I'll be here. You know, Instagram has helped me. I don't know about that, but for me, Instagram is a very big tool for me. Very, very big tools. Like, I don't do physical. Mm, advert, I barely do physical advert. And I, what saves me money? I don't spend money on, the only money I spend is paying blocks because I'm popular already. So I don't even need anybody to do the job for me. I do the advert myself. My own is just to pay blocks to just post it. So I have so, I'm, so much customers were coming from Instagram. So uh, what, I, what I did now was to gain the trust, because some people still doubt. I had to create a physical, open a physical office, branches. I opened a physical branch in Abuja, in Wuse, where customers can come physically to know that on the road, I make sure these locations are on the road. So I opened a physical office in Abuja where customers walk in, make transaction, make complaint. There's no Bitcoin company like, like that that will give you a physical address to come out because they feel people will bring troubles. But I feel my company doesn't have issues. So if you have issues, you come to the office, we'll solve it for you. So 
Instagram is a very big tool. Look, I, 100% of my customers are from Instagram, so I don't know them. So I launched a new office in Lekki on the road, Lekki Phase 1 to Instagram. That's where I posted the address and people turned up, like a lot of people turned up for the opening of the office. So I didn't do billboard or this. Everything was on my page. I just post on my page, people come to. But my page is um, really big. Sometimes I have up to like 500,000 views, 400,000 views. So I have a lot of viewers. So my page is very, very, if I lose my page, I'll be in trouble. That's my page, Instagram, I don't joke with it. So that's what I do. I come post. I don't look at comment or negative comment. I just post and go. Sometimes I just check DMs and DMs. So, but my WhatsApp numbers are there. So if you need to do business, just go straight to the WhatsApp and do business and they pay you. So we have a lot of staff on ground to attend to you. Like we are, like I said, we have over 40 staff on ground. How have you been able to balance the challenges as a business person in Nigeria with the way the government has been trying to like push away Bitcoin? Mm. Um, you know, every business has ups and downs. So, but for me, um, I'm trying to um, um, get gain trust, and the part of gaining trust of our customers is very easy for me because I'm famous and. I obviously look rich on Instagram, so I don't even need to persuade you much. If you can go to my page, you see everything that I'm capable of paying you for your Bitcoin, any of any amount. So on the government side, um, Bitcoin is not actually um, illegal. Like what the, the government is um, tr trying to say is that they don't have any hands in Bitcoin. So if you want to do your Bitcoin, do it on your own. So if you have any issues, you, you don't come to, to them. Like maybe they scammed you of Bitcoin, the government doesn't have anything to do with you because this they've warned you already that they don't have the government doesn't don't handle case of Bitcoin. That's what the government was trying to say. So and now government so government came back the second time telling bank to disassociate themselves from Bitcoin. Anything that has to do with bank does, don't have you can do with cash or whatever, but banks disassociate from Bitcoin. That was what um, the CBN said which affected a lot of crypto companies closing down and all that. You know, I feel I'm um, the only young man that knows my rights in Nigeria. So I feel I, I open my offices. So I believe it's not a wrong thing or a bad thing to open a, a Bitcoin store in Nigeria. So that's, I'm so confident. My office in Abuja has been there for like one year now and I don't have any issues. So this lucky only was just opened and I want to see how it goes. You mentioned earlier that you're married. When did you get married? Hmm. I married. Uh, I married early. I married as. Uh, I married when I was uh, twenty-two. Hmm. I married at twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-two. Oh, I married at twenty-one. Well, I said twenty-one. Twenty-one. I married the last day of um, twenty nineteen. That was when I got my last day. Of, that is thirty-first of December. That was when I officially got married. So I, when I was in 300 level, I met my wife. So I met my wife. She was a doctor then. She was in, um, I was in 300, she was in 200. So I met her. That was how we, she was, um, then I was, I was not even fine, self. I was very ugly, slim. And if I show you the picture, self, you. So I was, married, she, she was, she was very beautiful then. So she accepted me like that. We were managing, managing. I entered the Bitcoin. She was even supporting me by replying customers. Sometimes I sleep, she helped me reply customer. And we moved down to our car. We're staying together. So 2019, uh, we got married. 2019, last day of 2019. So the, I, I'm not that type that do big. Um, then it wasn't loud. It was just a small, so I, didn't invite, I didn't invite anybody. It was just a small, traditional marriage and all that. So. We, we married 2019, and I had my first child 2020. It's two years now, Elliot. So one thing people like about me is that, is that, part, that part of family. People like me so much. About people, anytime people come to see me, it's like they focus on that, like having a family that is crazy, you know? So the, the people love me, mostly young guys, they like about that family part, you know? You feel, you know, every young boy wants to be free. They don't want to get married and like me now, the level I am now, they want to just to flex and all that. But 
I just got married so that I only have, I always have that dream of having child early. So I'm 22, my son, I'm 22, my son is two. So I, it, it gives me joy when I get home, I see my wife, see my um, son, you know. And secondly, my, my mom, they're not left aside. So I take care of, I don't joke with my family. Like I just left um, Abuja. I, I live in Abuja too, I have an house in Abuja. So I took my mom on their first flight to Abuja. That was just a week ago. Then they went back. So I don't joke with family. Even my first time leaving Nigeria, I left with my wife to Dubai. That was just um, a month ago. My first flight. I've never left Nigeria. So I first time was me, my wife, and my son went to Dubai and we came back for just one week trip. So I just value. I feel, I feel family is the only people that will save you. Because when I was even arrested, none of my friends came to bail me. Only my wife and uh, mom and dad were there. So I feel family is the only thing that can save you. Because even your friends say will be scared to even come to UFC. They will be, nobody will, it's only your family that has the, the effort to, that, to come to that place. So I feel family is the only thing that can save you. And you're the only person that can save them too. If you don't save your family, who will save your family? You see me? Uh, really, you can save your family, so I empowered my brothers and all that. So how do you stay level-headed? I know social media and fame can get into your head. How do you stay past that? <laughs> See, um, um, the, the 10 nights I passed in that cell refurbished my thinking and everything. Like, my mental was scattered. That, like then, before the UFCC, I wasn't even 10% reached where I am now. But then I had three bands, so I was big, big boy, big boy. Then I even had escort then. I have two escorts now, federal government, you know, with escort. That time, I said, nobody know me. But just this thing, I just big boy thing. So I had escort then. So when I came out, I had to just drop those escorts first. Started arranging everything. You know, they say some, sometimes it's not every thing that happened, any every bad thing that happened is a bad thing. Some happen for good. Honestly, that EFC thing, I never believed it would turn out good for me. Because when I was there, I my life has scattered, honestly. But I came out and I saw that God used that to, to change my life, my thinking and everything. So um, that EFC cooled me down, honestly. Because when I came out, I had no escort. I was just, it didn't just, my own is just from, from house, from my house to my office, from my office to my house. You don't see me around. I don't go out. So anytime I go out, I barely go out. I barely go out. So I don't even let those social media thing. I believe um, I'm okay. I always say people be contented with whatever you have. That the, the main happiness in life is being happy with what you have. It's not by some people are not happy. Honestly, I have rich people, but they are not happy with what they have. Because the kind of the way they, they level this, imagine someone living in Banana Island and you're not even earning much. A lot of people live in Banana Island, but they don't even have one house. So they're not happy, but you see them post they live in Banana Island, but not happy. So the main happiness is being happy with yourself, with whatever you have, contentment. So I believe this is, I like being me. You know, I keep celebrity aside. When anybody I see, I see on the street, we hail, we greet, I even hug yourself. So, what advice do you have for younger people, younger people looking up to you, and also younger people that want to get into Bitcoin or are facing challenges with Bitcoin? Um, I always tell the young people, which I'm still young, so it's not as if I'm old. So I always tell them, keep little friends. Friends is one of the big problems people have. Who you have, imagine living in a house, a flat of three bedrooms, you guys are up to like six boys. I don't think you'll focus in life. So I, I always believe to stay on my own. So if you're a guy, you just have one or two brothers staying with you, real brothers. Then take your hustle serious. I think money will find you. Money goes to where there's peace of mind. You can't enjoy money where you don't have peace of mind. I'm telling you the truth. You ain't live rascal life. You know, I don't go to club. One thing about me, I don't go to club. I don't smoke. I don't drink. So 
Um, those things that I, that's why I'm not even disturbed, you know, smoke, no drink. So my life is boring. So if, for me, if I want to enjoy life, live a boring life. Not every time party, 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 smoke, do this. If you want to smoke, be a clean smoker. Don't let your smoking too, too much. Everybody knows that you're smoking and all that. Then don't copy. You know, most people, they're probably they copy celebrities. They copy celebrities. They copy a lot, you know. Don't copy. People live your own life. Live your own style. Then for Bitcoin, if you want to join Bitcoin, it's easy. You just have to make, find a way to look for customers. Most people, they don't like showcasing what they do. You are doing uh, Bitcoin. If you come to your Instagram page, it's private. How will, you, how will people patronize you? You have to keep on, you have to be active, show yourself, show, I treat Bitcoin. If you tell people, then I, when I started Bitcoin, I walk up to people, tell them I treat Bitcoin. But now everybody's doing big boy. You are hungry, you are doing big boy. You don't post, you don't advertise. Once you make money, you enjoy. You don't even say, okay, I make 100 k let me pay this blog to post me. But no. So that's just it. I don't have much to say. What is one advice you would give your younger self? I don't have much regrets in life. Like I don't, I, I do this to myself. I'm, I've been looking for what to say I'm regretting today, but honestly, I won't even lie to you. I don't have anything to regret because I've been, even when you talk about investment, I've been investing, talk of um, marriage, I've married, you know, there's no thing I'm, there's nothing I'm regretting to today because I've been doing the right thing coming. Like when I was 15, I've been, uh, you know, our Nigeria film is, so this Nigeria film, they do husband and wife thing, husband come, wife kiss him. Okay. I feature that thing in my mind that that's the kind of life I want. So I've been using that route. So I don't think I have anything to regret, honestly speaking.